On the 16th of September, I attended Let Women Speak in Dublin. A man called Philip Dwyer came over to ask some questions while he was live streaming. Yeah, just uh, I'm just going to see this guy here has a uh, LGBT flag on his jacket. I'm just going to see. <coughs> yeah, yeah. How are you? Hello. Do you mind if I say hello to you, Philip Dwyer, citizen journalist? Hi. I've just noticed you have your LGBT heart jacket and jacket. Yeah. Okay. So, are you? Uh, what has brought you out here today? Can I ask you? Uh, What's your first name? Sorry. Menno. M E N N O. M E N N O. Menno. Yeah, Menno. Uh, and I've been making. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, I've been making content about what I see as the conflict between women's rights, trans rights, and gay rights for the last three years, because there is a huge conflict here. And I very much support these women in speaking up about their rights and about what a woman is and isn't. Are you a gay man yourself? I am super duper gay. And I'm straight, so I mean, it's none of, you know what I mean? it's none of my business. That's why I wear this today. Yeah. They need to know that not everybody who is gay goes along with what they're talking because they're trying to tell us that lesbians have penises and gay men vaginas. And I'm like, well, hold on, I'm, ho I'm a homosexual. That's not, that's not, that, they're trying to sort of destroy the meaning of homosexuality just as they're trying to destroy the meaning of woman yeah. they try to destroy everything that's in their path it everyone who disagrees with them. it consumes everything trans the validation of trans consumes everything it reminds me of that horror film the blob where it's just like some weird blob from outer space lands and it just it just starts consuming everything so we have to absolutely speak out wherever we can as women, as parents, as gay men, as lesbians. Do you think there's a high percentage of the gay community that are like up they're for Posey Parker and, and her, uh, her narrative, her beliefs and, and her, her issues? Like, Well, see, I wouldn't say Posey Parker has, or Kelly J has beliefs. She's just stating facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other side is the ones who have the beliefs. What I've noticed is more and more gay men are slowly becoming aware that something's off. Yeah. But they're scared to talk about it because then you get, like I have been, I, I've had my gay card revoked and I'm like, well, what? For yeah. knowing what a gay man is. It kind of appears to me, like I was around Catholic Ireland when a lot of priests were uh, abusing children, uh, paedophile priests were abusing children. Uh, they, it seems that they kind of drifted into the priesthood because they probably felt protected in there that they, wouldn't, they weren't going to be, um, let's say, broached on their behaviour because of they were the colour and the, and the protection from the Catholic Church which was wrong and that was dealt with eventually but I think I have a feeling a lot of um, the, the gay community has been hijacked by a lot of paedophile um, um, let's say paedophile men and activists that are just looking for that to that movement for protection like the Catholic priests did back in the 70s and 80s in Ireland um I mean, in the 70s and the early 80s, I think there was something called PI, the Pedophile Information Exchange. And there were gay men that were part of that. And that's why it's so important, as, as ordinary gay men, that we say we want nothing to do with that. Similarly, now, with this movement, again, we see, you know, we see that happening, which is why it's even more important for us as gay men to say, again, this is not in our name, not in our name, it's got nothing to do with us. Well, I have to say, Menno, you're kind of brave to speak out like for this issue. Um, a lot of the gay, these uh, LGBT activists um, will try to demonise you and they will yeah. destroy it. They call me a Nazi, a fascist, a bootlicker, a Uncle Tom. Wayne Christo, fascist, uh, you know, all sorts, yeah. but I don't care. The reason, you know, I mean, this for me is quite personal because if I was a 13-year-old today with a mobile phone and TikTok, I would be on knocking on the gender clinic's doors, begging for the puberty blockers, thinking that trans would be the solution to how I felt at the time. Yeah. But the lesson I've learned in life, you know, over four, four and a half decades, is the only way to truly love yourself, and I know it sounds really cheesy, and accept yourself, is to, is to accept yourself for who you are, not, what, not try to get away from yourself, not to try to be something else. Or force yourself on other people. And, and trans is the opposite. So all the stereo, I mean, I'm a gay guy, so I've always been told that because I'm gay, I'm not really a man, uh, and I should have been a girl, and you just want to be a woman, don't you? I mean, I've had those questions from when I was a child, when I was a teenager, as, a, as, a, as an adult, and, you know, it's just stupid. It's all about... I'm just going to ask you another, another question, put a point to you as well. I mean, yeah, I see you have the LGBT colours on you. On you. The gay, L gay. LGB. Oh, sorry. Just gay. Okay. Just gay. Yeah, yeah, so 
to a lot of people and especially a lot of my viewers now would regard that as kind of a globalist takeover flag you know that um, I have mixed feelings now about the rainbow flag because of all this nonsense that is happening in the so-called name of, of gay right but it's the progress flag that I take issue with that's not that's not my flag to me that flag says oppression authoritarianism totalitarianism and basically fucking everything up and it's, it's like anti-woman we, we don't have a heterosexual flag if you know what I mean no but I mean my dad has said the same thing but that's because again as, as heterosexual people you haven't had to fight to be visible as heterosexuals you haven't had that, that same history so I mean I'm not really into flags you're being attacked right now well uh, straight white men yeah uh, cis right they call you cis <laughs> I know but I don't and you know what that means white is being held against you just being white yeah. you know you're the white angry man and, and being middle aged is being held against you so I have to say, I've never been a big flag waver. But now, today especially, I was just stood there facing those idiots and I was so proud to hold up well yeah. this jacket with the rainbow because it's like you, you want to take everything from us. You want to take our words, you want to take our language, you want to take our rights, you want to take our flags. No. It's great to meet somebody, you know, sane from the gay community willing to speak up. I mean, they're aware. There's, guy, there's a guy, Christian... Um, Oh, he's going to kill me now for not remembering his name. But he's a, a gay man living in, in the north side of Dublin there who's spoken out for a couple of years now on this. And, uh, you know, he's just calling... The, the author, he's, he's John, Boyne. John Boyne. He wrote uh, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Okay. Okay. He's just come out more as a on, on this side of things. I mean, he's been sort of... He was trying to be on the middle ground, right? Be nice to the trans people and... And it doesn't work. There is no middle ground because you either accept that a woman is a woman or you don't. You either accept that lesbians don't have penises or you don't. There is no middle ground. It's kind of, I find it evil uh, the way they're trying to push it on children as well. It's quite evil. There, I've seen books, right, that are written and made for four-year-olds where they glorify double mastectomies. And it's, it's like, keep this... Uh, this is not how gay rights were won. We didn't do this. We we wanted debate. We wanted to have, you know, we wanted to get things out in public. This is all the opposite. It's doing everything by the back door. It's trying to shut people up. It's it's the opposite of gay rights. It's just to clarify, there's uh, there's a good few people here watching this now on the live stream, but uh, just to clarify, I, I, when I said it was hijacked by pedophiles as well, um, the gay, the LGBTQ plus movement, whatever, it's cultural Marxists have hijacked it as well, like you know. I read a lot about that. I don't know much about communism and Marxism, so I, I don't really know. But what I know is that this whole crazy movement has definitely piggybacked onto the gay rights movement, and it's like a parasite. It's trying to kill the host. And when we talk about it, we get shut down. We get fired from our jobs. Blah blah blah. You know, it it, it doesn't gel because. We're the opposite of one another. Like, what validates trans denies homosexuality. And what acknowledges homosexuality denies trans. And it's time that people start, stop lumping us together. There's no such thing as LGBTQIA, nbp 2 s plus. I mean, come on. And we can't get them to debate. They won't sit down and have a, a, a discussion across the table or come to the microphone and tell me what they think and have a discussion you need to know plus another reason for me speaking out as a gay man and as a very woo -woo sort of gay man it's because they're ruining everything that gay people have achieved that gays and lesbians have achieved they're telling us that trans people achieved it for us as if we just sat on our asses and did nothing they're trying to rewrite gay history and saying that you know it was all done by trans people it's like stop just stop what about men uh, conversion therapy are you for or against well, that, that means what you mean by it, because them idiots, I just don't have better words for it. They are trying to sneak it in, but it actually means you'd get more gay conversion through the gender clinics. Uh, we know that a lot of the youngsters who are referred to the gender clinics, the, the majority of them are same-sex attracted. Their ideas put them on the puberty blockers and the estrogen or the testosterone. Whereas I'm saying, get them away from the gender clinics... Let them go through puberty, let them find out who they are. And if they grow up to be lesbian or gay or bisexual, wonderful, but give them the chance. Whereas what they're promoting is what I see as medical gay conversion. This is the biggest medical gay conversion scandal 
of our times. It's anti-gay and they're cheering it on. Isn't it so bizarre that it's just in Ireland and countries that are so uh, woke, cultural Marxist, left-wing uh, countries that have the biggest um, amount of children who are now confused about their gender? Uh, who, who this stuff from an early age, like that book that I mentioned to you. I read it last week. It's for four-year-olds and it's, it's talking about mastectomies and... And not, it doesn't seem to born in, in, in another body. That being a boy or a girl is all up to you. Now, but I'll tell you one thing, right? Because some of this seems like it's all new, but it's not. So in the 70s, there was a, a bloke who thinks he's a woman, and he had a disco song. It's, it's a bit shit, but it's a bit funny. And it's called Super Paradise. And in it, he sings, Super Paradise coming through, boy or girl, it's all up to you, left or right. In Super Paradise, they do the sex change <laughs> that's what's happening now you know the thinking hasn't changed it's just taken over so what was a, a crazy weird grotesque disco performance is now reality in schools and drag queen story or what's your thoughts on that Menno? Uh, I've done drag in the past myself really? uh, yeah in, in, but in pubs in gay pubs because I see it as an adult form of entertainment uh, the way I did it was never necessarily sexual if you like um, what it gave me was the freedom to, to perform and to, to be outrageous that I that I couldn't afford that I felt I couldn't afford my own with consenting adults it's in a gay pub with adults and again I just sang comedy songs you know about liposuction what do you think is going on as a, a former drag queen or drag queen artist what do you think is the motivation behind these drag queen uh, men who are going in to children and reading stories I don't know because I don't know them I don't know why they need an audience of children I can see why if you have you know you don't go into old folks homes well that's one thing but also they don't put a gay man like myself in there to just be normal and talk to children um, or, or a lesbian you know it, it, I wouldn't agree with that either. I don't think that should be, you know, that's for older kids when they go. I'd be, I'd be asking, what's the point of that? Like, if, if they want to have like a magical creature, like a unicorn that reads a story, but then it's not human, right? It's not meant to be a man or a woman or some gender bending type thing. It's just a magical creature. Then I'd be like, okay, I don't see the issue. But, but I've seen clips where, you know, you've got the kids putting money. This is in the States, in, in the knickers of some, some scantily clad bloke. And it's like, why is that person looking for a, an audience of children? Why are the parents bringing those children along? Allow not all to happen. So, so I'm not in a place where I say drag, bad, bad, bad. I know there's feminists who think that any form of drag is misogynistic, for example. I don't share that view, but I can see that it does exist. Um, and I'm like, drag is for is adult. It, that's for the gay bars. I mean, obviously. You know, in pantomimes, you have the dame. It's a form of drag, but it's very different. Back in the day, the, uh, Danny LaRue and Dame Edna Everidge, there was a kind of a, a comedy entertainment. Yeah. Right, so th there are many different strands of drag, but drag queen story time, I, I have questions about that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's As a gay men, we should be allowed to say that without being trashed for it. It's child grooming. It depends what, what it is that they're saying to these kids and what stories they're reading. For me, the mere fact of the, the man dressed like that uh, in, a, in a sexually provocative way is enough for me. Actually, I do know a guy who does it, but he does it more in a pantomime dame. We haven't spoken for like six or eight years. Um, he does it more in a pantomime dame sort of way. But then there was a video of him online twerking in front of kids, and it's just like, oh... I wouldn't trust these guys as far as I told, but Menno, it was actually a pleasure to talk to somebody from the gay community who has loads of common sense and we might not agree on everything, but you know, you're capable, we're capable of having an adult conversation. What a woman is, and, and it's, I have to say, uh, I, you know, just in case anyone's watching that needs to hear this, thank you to the lesbians who've been ringing the alarm about this for years. And like for a while I was like, oh, grumpy lesbians, oh, they're always spoiling the fun. And I was ignorant and I just miss, I dismissed it outright and now I'm like they were ringing the alarm ok Menno thanks a million again Philip Dwyer nice to talk to you take care to everyone that I met in Dublin thank you so much for the warm welcome especially Rosemary thank you for your hospitality and my Patreon and PayPal supporters you make it possible for me to make these trips so thank you very much a special shout out to my sugar daddies and fairy godmothers, 
and a massive big thank you to my big spenders. Helper Open, Mama Turf and the Turventines, the lovely Mary, me Julie, Julia, Lindy Lou from Down Under, Dusty, and Esther. Thank you so much.